Hey cats, Ed Carbon Bud here. Do you guys remember the TV series Portlandia? There's a famous episode, wasn't there? Put a bird on it and that would just instantly sell a product. It's starting to feel a little bit like that in the shoe world. Today I declare, put a plate in it. Welcome back to the channel guys. You stopping by is always appreciated. Help us out here at Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews by hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And also click the bell for notifications. It helps us out a huge amount too if you give this video a thumbs up like. Dank is schön. Carbon plates, they're everywhere. Those now very familiar carbon spatula shapes inserted into the midsole foam. They're a firm favorite with fitness fiends and footwear fanciers alike. But it's clear the plate is being used a bit like a soundbite to sell shoes right now, to shift those soles and secure some sales, with lots of former plateless models now being equipped with some sort of insert in the foam. I mean, some of them have more carbon than even Han Solo did in the latter stages of The Empire Strikes Back. Let's look at a few recently released models and decide whether they need a carbon plate or not. Back when I purchased my first carbon plate shoe, you might think it was the Vaporfly. I mean, it was a real treat. Quite squishy, but still quite stable, with a quite rigid feel and great for speed work and a wonderful smooth ride through the gate cycle. But it wasn't that Vaporfly model. It was in fact the Nike Zoom Fly Flyknit. It was a really lovely counterpoint to the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, like a training model, just a bit more durable, slightly wider in the heel as well, so you had a bigger platform to land on. And of course, React is a somewhat more durable foam than Zoom X. The dimensions and the stack height very similar and it gave a really good account of itself as a daily iteration of the Vaporfly 4% model. Just a touch more weight. Much has changed though with Nike's current Zoom Fly 4 model. It just seems like a confused one now, like it lacks any direction especially when you pair it up against the Vaporfly Next% percent or the Alphafly Next%. Percent. The upper feel and underfoot experience are just vastly different now, and it doesn't really have the same use case. Moving to Adidas now. The Boston series was a firm favourite amongst marathon runners. Not gallons of cushion, but just sensible protection, and a reliable pair for anybody who was going to venture up towards 26.2 miles. This year though, much has changed for the Boston model. They incorporated a much higher midsole stack, not only a part plate in the heel of the shoe, but also those famous energy rods. Multiple carbon or glass fiber, if you believe all of the extra info, rods in the mid to forefoot of the shoe. It sent many athletes, both elite and non-elite, running to other models. People just didn't really get on the remodel here. I know loads and loads of people are very upset about it. They've just moved away from that tried and trusted formula that they had before. I gotta say, I am warming to this shoe at easier efforts recently. You know, more pedestrian sort of paces. Can't see myself doing any speed work in it though. Just feels overly clunky and cushioned for that. I think it's just a little bit too much shoe for my skinny frame. I mean, it's well above 340 grams in my UK size 11 and a half. And with a wealth of upper here, it won't be all that compatible with the very wintry UK weather. It tends to be a bit of a sluggish, wet slog through to the end of February here. Hoka One One are on it too with the carbon stuff. This time with the forthcoming Bondi X shoe. If I'm not mistaken, did Kafuzi wear this the other day for his half marathon? Maybe I imagined that. Let me know in the comments if I was all right about that. The Bondi was again a max cushion shoe. One that people really enjoyed for sort of longer runs. This time though, there's forests of foam here and a considerable price as well. 180 Earth credits here in the UK. It's mind numbing. Bit of a tasty price. You could even call it a super shoe price, couldn't you? I think that'll be a big turn off to wallet conscious runners. I mean, I can see the allure of a max cushion shoe. One that you can take out for those longer runs if you're doing some sort of marathon training. If you just want a nice big pillow to lay back in if you're just doing a few easy Sunday miles. But at 180 Earth credits? Hoka opting for a plate again here to provide some stability perhaps with so much foam underneath. Although it looks more than it actually is. Apparently it's only 33 millimeters back there in the heel. That amount seems meager compared to something like the Alpha Fly these days. I reckon the men's size nine US is about 300 grams. So it's gonna be quite hefty. It'll be colossal in my UK size 11 or 11 and a half. So probably one I'm gonna avoid but 
I'm sure it might work for some people, just not very many. Another shoe that's getting the put a plate in it treatment seems to be the Adidas Takumi Sen 8. We saw that recently at that Adidas road race, didn't we? I say road race, it was around their headquarters on an interesting track. Adidas traditionally have used a torsion system in the midsole of that shoe. A very popular series amongst some serious runners. The Takumi Sen 8 though will bear little similarity to the 7 here. It looks like they're drastically redesigning the upper and you're going to lose that torsion system underfoot. That's all been placed in the trash with some incoming energy rods. No word if there's a more conventional plate in the heel to provide some stability there, as per the Boston 10, I suppose. You can kind of see it there, actually, can't you? In the heel. It's directly underneath the insole. I wouldn't discount anything, though, these days in 2021. That's what it's taught me. It wouldn't surprise me to see that, considering the increased stack height in this shoe. Just comparing it up against the 7, there's vastly more foam here this time. Only 25.5 millimeters in the heel of the 7. I'm not even going to speculate about how much there is in the 8. I think the only way to get that rigid feel that people want from a higher pace shoe, especially when you're using Lightstrike Pro foam, is to incorporate those energy rods. I think you need a certain amount of foam to be able to house them, so that probably explains the increase in the midsole stack. The rods just are gonna demand a little bit more height to the foam to be able to contain them, perhaps granting the advantage of rigidity in the forefoot, which is what everybody's looking for. We still don't know just how advantageous these energy rods are, do we? Aside from some impressive performances from athletes utilizing the shoes in the Berlin Marathon, and of course the Olympic marathon. I mean, looking back to 2018, there was a whole varied list of different shoes that were appearing in the top three podium positions of the various world marathons. By 2019, it was completely dominated by the next percent, but Adidas is slowly starting to come back into the running. There's been some really good performances by athletes utilizing the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2. So just a few models there, guys, where people have started to integrate plates into them where they were plateless before. Which model do you think is going to be next? There's probably some people sat around a meeting table right now saying, put a plate in it. Or do you think that we'll slowly move back to plateless shoes sometime in the future? I don't see them going anywhere right now. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. An album which got overlooked a little bit due to the global happenings over the last 18 months was Fontaine's DC's A Hero's Death. There's some winning tracks here. Almost a drum and bass type vibe about some of the drums and rhythm section. Really interesting guitar atmospheres and wonderful lyrics as well. The lyrics are some of the best out there. Listening to this album whilst running this week has been a real pleasure. Favourites of mine on the album are I Don't Belong, Televised Mind is also a real cracker, and the title track A Hero's Death as well. But the whole album's great. Go and check it out, guys. You will not be disappointed. Intriguing and energy-filled sounds for your ears. Fontaine's DC, A Hero's Death. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of this discussion piece today, guys. I hope it sparks a little bit of thought and lights the blue touch paper. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications when I roll out those new videos for you. It also helps the channel out a great deal if you give this video a thumbs up like and also share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.